In order to convict you of felony domestic violence, the prosecution has to prove that you caused a traumatic condition, basically an injury. And in this video, I'm going to be going through the five top defenses against this traumatic condition element. My name is Veronica. I'm a domestic violence defense attorney and I handle cases throughout the entire state of California. I help people put their cases behind them so that they can enjoy their lives and their freedom. I'm also the creator of a course called Defeat the DVRO in which I teach you from start to finish exactly how to represent yourself at a restraining order hearing and win. So if that is something you're dealing with in addition to the criminal case, make sure you get your free first class via the link down below. Okay, so let's jump right in the five top defenses to this traumatic condition element. Now I'll link a video where I go on a deep dive into exactly what traumatic condition means, but basically it means that there is an injury. It can be internal or external. It could be something that is not visible like a sprain and strangulation or suffocation also fulfills this element even if there is no injury. If blood flow or breathing was impaired. If you want more, including the examples, check out the other video. But let's go into five defenses that I see come up in cases as a domestic violence defense attorney. Number one, it was a previous injury. So this comes up a lot when someone has a bruise, especially if they bruise easily, if they have pale skin and bruises show up really easily on them, they may have at any given time on their body some sort of bruise and the cops come out, they see it. Maybe the alleged victim doesn't actually want the person who gets arrested to get arrested, but the cops see that, they hone in on it, they take photographs of it, and then the prosecution sees this photo and thinks, aha, this was a traumatic condition, there's an injury there. Now to support this defense, you could use witness testimony, photos or videos showing that same injury that existed before the alleged incident. And sometimes it even involves a medical expert. When there's a bruise that is old and the prosecution is trying to tell the jury is new, you need an expert to come in and testify about it. Number two, not an injury at all. So sometimes someone will have creases from sleeping or rosacea or some other sort of skin condition that the prosecution execution sees and that is not actually an injury. Perhaps in photos that the police take and they're not always the best photos, it looks like it might be, but it is actually not one. Sometimes if it's something like rosacea that I've even shown the prosecution, look, there's been a protective order in place. My client obviously hasn't been in contact with the alleged victim, but if you look at her today, you can see that there is redness in that exact same area. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Sometimes it involves getting medical records to show that that was treated in the past, depending on what it is. Number three, not actually a traumatic condition at all. Like there is no injury or alleged injury. There's nothing visible. Usually the cops have not gone to law school and they sometimes will get it wrong. And there could be, for example, an alleged push. If there is no injury from that, if there is no traumatic condition, then make sure that the prosecution and the judge do not just glaze over that detail and that you are really focused on this point that, again, must be proven in order for you to be convicted. Number four, fabricated injury. Look, I have seen people use Snapchat filters in restraining orders to try to show that they had an injury, specifically a black eye. Fabricated injuries do happen. Could be makeup, could be a filter. There was a famous actress, and I'm not going to say her name because I don't know if she made it up or not at this point, but there was a very famous trial. And one of the things she was accused of was using makeup to make it look like she had injuries. Number five, if there is strangulation or suffocation or an allegation of that, that it didn't actually impede blood flow or coughing. Even if there's hard evidence like video of some sort of neck grabbing taking place, if it didn't stop the person from being able to breathe, and if it didn't impede the blood flow, which usually means that they do feel dizzy or sometimes can black out, then that does not count as a traumatic condition either. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, if this is a topic that you want to learn more about, make sure you watch the video that's linked below because it does go on a much deeper dive, it's game show format, and we'll give you some good examples that should help you figure out how this applies to your case if it does. If you do have a criminal case in California and you need help with it, you can find my number down below. You can also book a consultation there. And if you did find this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell.